All right, at this point, I'm assuming we've got Apache installed and it's ready to be played with a little bit. Let's go ahead and see if we can do just a very, very simple website in Apache. And while we do it, we need to get into some good habits, some good habits about logging and just some good, good ideas just for computing in general. Configuration. Where is the configuration for Apache? Well, I mean, if it's a configuration file, more than likely it's going to be somewhere in Etsy. And the name of the program was HTTPD, so we can sort of assume CD HTTP. There we go, HTTPD. Underneath that, you have some different things. Conf is the one that we're looking for. So your directory is Etsy HTTPD conf. And the file that is configured is httpd.conf. That controls the way that Apache, the way it acts. The default directory for web pages, just with a default install of Apache, is under var www.html. There's nothing in there right now. That's where we're going to put our website. Logs. Logging is very, very important and it's not always appreciated up front. Um, in Linux especially, because they're easier to see I think, anything that happens, generally it will kick out something to a log file somewhere, anything bad that happens especially. Um, we have var log messages and we can take a look and that's just a general repository of there's some kind of message, boom, here's where it went. There are also some that are specific to Apache. Under var log, you actually have your own directory, the HTTPD directory, where it will spit access and error logs. So they're actually separated. Then if you have a, if you have a machine that's being a web server and you have 30 different websites, well kicking them all into the same um, error logs can get confusing so you actually have the opportunity to create custom logs to help organize a little bit better. Let's go and look and see the logs page. CD var log httpd. There we go. We have an access log and we have an error log. Now they're already there which tells me that I may have already hit the website on this thing at least once. Um, if this is empty Generally, it means that nobody's hit your website yet because it doesn't create them until the first time that the website's, some website has been accessed. Um, we'll come back to the logs once we get something interesting in them. So let's create a very simple um, index.html page and we'll see if we can see it. I'm going to go cd var www.html and I'm going to create some beautiful code vim index.html. Now by default index.html is going to be your default document. And I'm using vim. It's the vi improved editor. It's a really simple editor and it's guaranteed to be there most of the time. I'm going to say i to put myself in insert mode html um, h1 simple page, end my h1, and end my html. Tiny little snippet of bad html code. When I'm finished I can say escape to knock myself out of insert mode and then colon w to write and q to quit and then enter and I have created a very simple index.html for my website. So. I'm ready to hit it from a machine outside my VM. To do that I need to know my machine's IP address because right now I don't have any kind of host head or anything else um, configured for it. IF interface config. In Windows it would be IP config but this is interface configuration and I can see that my IP address is 192.168.254.104. So let's go out to a browser and see if we can hit that. 192, 168, 254, 104. Failed to connect. Now, 
why would that be? Would it, is it a rights problem? That's usually where, where students jump to thinking of to begin with. This doesn't strike me as being a rights problem because it didn't say rejected. It can't establish a connection to it. So it's beyond rights. It's most likely the server itself. Let's jump in and prove what's going wrong. Um, if you remember the netstat command, netstat, um, T-A-P-N, I'll say more just in case it's long. There should be something really obvious missing out of here. We can see all these different port numbers. There's mail. There's SSL. Um, there's one that's very obviously missing, which is port 80. So that should give us an indication that Apache's not running. Let's see if we can prove it. Service, HTTPD, status. There's our problem. HTTPD is stopped. So to start it, I'm going to say service, HTTPD, start. That looks okay. Now let's back up and do this netstat command again. Now all of a sudden I've got port 80 and it is running on the program name is HTTPD. That should make worlds of difference in whether or not I can access this. Well, this is a simple page. Alrighty. So we've created a simple page now. Um, let's go back just for a second and take a look at the logs. So we've done that, now we're going to check our logs. Let's, um, and I mentioned that they won't be created until something's been accessed. Now it's time to do a tail var log httpd um, error log. We've got some kind of errors. One thing that it kicks out is this fav icon. It doesn't have that cute little icon that goes beside the title bar on some of them because I didn't go to the trouble of creating it. And it gripes about that a little bit. The rest of it are just basic messages. Let's see what's in messages itself. Tail, var, log, messages. There won't be a lot of Apache specific stuff in messages. Most of it's going to be kept in the, that um, HTTP directory, but every once in a while you'll get something meaningful in messages if something gets spit out to the operating system and it, it's interesting to it. The other thing that's interesting, instead of error log, we also have access log. And this will tell me which computer um, accessed it. 254.175 is the one that accessed it. Um, it did get a 404. That's for the fav icon. But it did get a 200 up here. There we go. 175 has been the only one to hit it. So I would be willing to bet some pretty good money that if I do start, run, cmd, ip config, that I am indeed 254, 175. So, yep, it was me. Something else that's kind of cool with logs that I like to do is you've got different workspaces down here that you can click back and forth through. I like to open up a terminal, blow it up as big as I can, and then do a tail var log httpd error log. And that's cool. It shows you the last 10. But what's really cool about it is you can use the dash F option, which means follow. And what it does is it prints out the last 10, but it doesn't return you to a prompt. Whenever new errors come in, they immediately get sent there. So without having to go through the trouble of hitting that command again and typing in that, that big long name, you can just pop over here and look and see what your errors are. Um, sometimes I'll even go here and do access log, maybe go here and do messages. So if I'm really scratching my head troubleshooting something, that's something that that you can, well, that I normally do. There we go. All right, the httpd.conf file. Um, one of the first things that you need to get in the habit of, and this will be good for other things besides Apache, I promise. Etsy httpd conf. This is our configuration directory, and httpd.conf is our file. What I am bad to do is to jump in and start editing the httpd.conf file. 
and if it's something that I'm trying to pull off the top of my head or I'm trying something new, I'll end up trashing that guy to the point that it's unusable, and that's not all that uncommon. So what do you do when that happens? Well, if you've not made a backup of it, you, in these we have deep freeze, so um, we just reboot the machine, or you'd have to reinstall Apache, which is a hassle. So to keep that from happening, um, I'm going to say copy httpd.conf, and I'm going to name it .org for the original. You can name it whatever. Um, that is actually the original. That's a little bit special to me. So I'll, I'll name it .org for original. And then after that, if I make changes that here, this is a good running configuration, but it's not the original, I'll call it conf.back or .back1 or .back2 if I want to monitor my revisions. But having some kind of backup is some good advice. And I'd like to say I follow my own advice consistently all the time, but I don't. So that's one thing that you need to do to begin with. Another thing we need to talk about is the concept of stanzas. This configuration file that we're going to be looking at is set up in, a lot of it is set up in stanzas. You think about music, like a verse of music. Another way you can think of it is, that's kind of C code -y looking, to enclose something in something else. The HTML equivalent would be like this. You start here, and then you know when you get to here, you've enclosed the whole thing. Well, this is set up in stanzas as well, but it's usually of options about directories. You'll have a directory statement, and then the directory that it goes with, and then there'll be what's called directives. Server root here is a directive, and then this is the option that's fed to it. You'll have all different options and, and all different ways to configure stuff that's being accessed from that directory. And then when you're done, you say slash directory. And the importance of this is if you're going to add something or edit something, you need to make sure where you are. What you don't want to do is have a directory statement long about here in the middle of another directory statement. That will kick out an error. Now one good thing about it, Apache has good errors and generally it does a really good job of pointing you in the right direction of where something is goofed. Pound signs or comments. It's like that through a lot of different Linux things. If the line starts off with a pound sign, the whole line is comment. The file itself, um, thanks to the fact that Apache is so widespread and it's been around for a, a good while, the normally you get a configuration file that has lots and lots and lots of comments. The configuration file that we have here is almost a thousand lines and probably better than 75 percent of that is comments. Another thing to mention at this point is it is not a waste of time to sit down and just read the configuration file because I can't tell you how many times that I've been doing something and instead of reading the configuration file just skimming through the lines myself, I've ran out to Google, or I've ran out to somebody else, or just started searching to try to find the answer myself, and 30, 45 minutes later, I finally find it, and then when I go in to implement it in the uh, configuration file, I'll look up three or four lines and say, oh, that's what it said to do. So reading your configuration file is, it's not a waste of time. The httpd.com file is only read when Apache is started or restarted. So if you change something on it and then don't immediately see results, that makes sense. And this is a common mistake too. Students will change something and they, and they try it and it doesn't work. And then they'll change something else and then that doesn't work. And then they'll change something else and that didn't work. And when they ask questions, it turns out that they've not restarted the service. So what you'd have to do is a service HTTPD restart just to restart the service. And then it would read that file again. Um, the HTTP.conf is broken up in different sections. And I actually took this out of the file itself. Section one is global environments, stuff for the entire web server itself. Let's take a look. I'm going to use Vim, and I'll even make it take up the whole screen. Vim, HTTP.conf. Um, there's good stuff up here, talks about Apache. Section one, global environments. This is going to be stuff that affects everything about the server. Vim is handy because it actually understands the 
directives and the different options and will give you different colors that winds up being very handy especially if, if you've ever tried to do this in black and white um let's go on back and look at some terms server root http that would be your directive and that would be your option and that's some stuff that would be in a global environment that's going to be used by the entire server section two is going to be the main server configuration and again i pull this just directly out of the file itself um, stuff directives in this section will be set for the main server or your default server anything that isn't in virtual hosts so your default server is all going to be configured in section two and it's going to have let's take a look section two is actually on down there a ways there it is main server configuration stuff like document root by default where are documents going to be they're going to be in var www.html that makes sense and a little bit further on down there's a directory statement okay so here are some options for slash now slash in, in this instance is going to be in reference to this so these apply to that directory that's section two and while we're here almost at the very bottom is and I'm actually just going to hit the bottom because it's easier to find that way we have section three almost missed it section three virtual host this is where you set up multiple hosts and you're going to have the directives but they are going to be enclosed in something like this a virtual host statement there's the statement and then here's all the different direction directives and then all the different options that go along with it so that's the way that the file itself is laid out just to kind of make it a little bit more friendly resources so that you can kind of figure out what's going on with Apache if you need help one of the best places to go is actually gosh that's a funny looking address isn't it you can actually go to apache.org and docs and see boop, I clicked and actually see those pages let me pause the video real quick so I can go find it. okay I have to say I scratched my head when I looked at these silly looking addresses but the truth is that's really what they are so there's two different um, pages that are linked where this came from this is actually almost the head command pulling off the top 10 lines of the httpd.conf file itself so this is actually in the configuration file so that they're easy to find um, let's take a look this is the docs for version 2.2 .2. and there's all kinds of different stuff in this user guide if you want to look at log files you can look and see what goes on with the log files and it's actually fairly easy to read for what it is and this is a good source of information for all different kinds of things now specifically these directives like the um, what was it directory index let's see if I can find it I got to get into the DI's directory index there we go directory index directive and it tells something about it and gives us some kind of idea about what's going on with it so that winds up being a really good reference all right so the big things that I wanted to get across were um, don't close your PowerPoint ahead of yourself the big thing that I want to get across was one make sure you make copies of your configuration file before you get started and two when you have problems the first place you go is your log files all right